Hey guys, just wanted to do this video, show you uh, Rod and Staff Grade 3 English. Um, here is the Grade 2, so you can compare the thickness. And then here is Grade 4, so you can kind of compare the thickness here. So, hope that gives you an idea. I'll try to do another video of the other ones too. But anyways, um, I really like it. It's a good program. Um, this is definitely solid. I would recommend, um, you know, this is something I would definitely recommend. And the way we like to use it is we typically, of course, I wish we could do things a little bit differently, but we have a lot on our plate, but we usually just read it together, my daughter and I. So we're both learning at the same time and we're, she'll just answer the questions and tell me where something belongs. I do think it'd be good to write it out because I think by writing it out, it's almost like gonna make her brain remember it a little bit better. Um, but that's just us. We have another English curriculum that we do, so it's no big deal. So I'm doing this flip through because I kind of want you to see a little bit more about it. So let me try to zoom in here and then there we go. Okay, so um, they do it in units. I feel like this is more like mastery, if I could give an opinion here. Um, we've been homeschooling about three years now, so I don't know everything, but I feel like this is more mastery. It explains things in a really easy to understand way. So you can feel free to pause it if you wanna kinda of check out the different things here, but um, it explains things very well. Let me zoom in a little here, okay. And um, where you have like a Becca, um, CLE, I feel like that's a little more spiral. This kind of like focuses, and this this might be spiral, I can't say for sure, but um, the way they explain things is like much deeper, where you have a Becca, and a Becca is more like, and CLE also, it has like a little tidbit at the top and has like a little explanation and they teach you a little something in a box. And then they have the work underneath it and then they might kind of review a little bit of the old and teach new concepts. Um, this goes like real heavy into like just adjectives and adverbs and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, at first I thought this was boring looking um, when I saw it on YouTube, but the more I got to know about it and looking through it and reading it, I was like, wow, this is actually amazing. And they incorporate God into everything. Like they don't just use a general sentence. The sentence will be something describing the Bible or a Bible verse, or it'll tell like a whole story with like 10 sentences that are questions, you know? So, um, God wants us to make good friendships. This English textbook is to become one of your good friends. It was written to help you understand da 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 da. Um, gives you some uh, some tips here. Prepare an English paper according to the pattern shown in the lesson, then copy neatly and carefully the four rules for treating your textbook as a friend. Um, let's see here, using the dictionary. And so they have like this little section over here where they kind of teach you something and then they give like an example and then a little bit more and then they have like where the kids have their questions. So I'm just gonna kind of flip through here a little bit. This is about the dictionary and then what is a sentence? And you'll see here, what is a sentence? Not every group of words written like a sentence is a sentence. In the following list, all the group groups of words begin with a capital letter. They all end with a period, but only two of them are really sentences. Do you know which ones they are? And then they have these five options. Jesus walked on the water. The disciples in the boat cried out in fear. Jesus called to them, stilled the storm. So they're, they're telling a little story, essentially. Um, every sentence must have a complete thought and the group of words above only numbers one and four have complete thoughts. They are only, they are the only two sentences. To have a complete thought, a sentence must have a part that tells who or what the sentence is about. The part is called the subject. In sentences one and four, Jesus tells who the sentence is about. The subject is Jesus. A, sub a sentence must also have a part that tells what the subject does or is. This part is called the predicate. In sentences one and four, the predicates are walked on the water and called to them. These predicates tell what Jesus did. Look at the other group of other groups of words above. Can you tell which is missing from each group that is not a sentence? Okay, remember, a sentence is a group of words with a complete thought. It must have a subject that tells who or what the sentence is about and a predicate that tells what the subject does or is. 
All sentences begin with a capital letter and must end with a period. So this is definitely a review because they already talk about this in grade two and they do like a heavy on it. Recognizing and writing sentences. Read each group of words. If it is a complete sentence, write complete. If it is not a complete sentence, write whether it is a subject or a predicate. Okay. The rain pattered softly on the roof. Mother hummed a tune, galloped across the field, the tall pine trees. So you get it. It's and then they have more questions here. And then write each column of words in alphabetical order. And then they talk about telling sentences. Every day we say many things about the world around us. We hear others say many things too. Here are some things we may say or hear. So anyways, it goes into this. And then you're going to have practice with telling sentences. The two sentence parts. Looks like uh, diagramming, I guess. And then... Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. We haven't done this yet. So, um, subjects and predicates, and I'll kind of teach you about that. So, the simple subject of a sentence tells who or what the sentence is about. But sometimes there's more than one noun or pronoun that tells who or what. Then the sentence has more than one simple thought. Paul and Silas sang, birds, bats, and insects fly. Who sang? Both Paul and Silas tell who. What creatures fly? Birds, bats, and insects all tell what? The simple predicate of a sentence tells what the subject does or is. But sometimes there's more than, than one verb. Then the sentence has more than one simple predicate. The disciples sang and prayed. Mother baked, washed, and sewed. When you look for the simple subject of a sentence, be careful to find all the nouns or pronouns that tell who or what the sentence is about. So anyways, it's, it goes really into detail. And what I will say is like, it, you can buy this on different websites. The one that I'm familiar with is milestonebooks.com. And they have examples in there that you can look through. Now, I bought mine on eBay. I paid like 20 bucks for this whole thing. I think I bought these little, little extra books here on their website. But um, the nice thing is if you're on a budget, you can buy this really cheap on eBay, 20 bucks. I mean, where can you buy a homeschool curriculum subject for that cheap of a price? Um, the nice thing is you're also recycling. So when somebody's done with this, you're now taking it and you're using it. The only negative about buying it off eBay and doing it that way is that you're not giving the business to a company like Milestone Books. And if you want to see these books continue to be produced, if you want to see a nice Christian company like that supported, then that's something to think about and to each their own. But I bought the three subjects, the three different grades here from eBay. But moving forward, I think that I'm going to be buying off their website to help support them because I'd like to see this stay in business. So anyways, just wanted to put that out there. If, you, if you're on a budget, go to eBay. Look on Facebook groups or something. I'd, I'd feel better with eBay, but that's just me. But anyway, so lots of written practice asking sentences, subjects and predicates and asking sentences, but lots of, lots of like different questions here. And this is something you can just do with your child. They don't have to write this out. Um, I would say you could photocopy this and have them work on it, but I don't know if that's even legal. So I'm not going to tell you to do that. Um, but it, we just go through it and read it together. Or if I'm feeling like she needs the, the extra practice, then I'll tell her to write it out so she's remembering it better. For me, when I write something out, it's always a little bit better for me. Like when I read a Bible verse, you know, it's it's great and all, but when I write it down, I feel like I remember it a little bit better. So it would be good that they write this down, but we do another English curriculum. So this was more supplement the grade two that we had done. So anyways... Commanding sentences and exclaiming sentences. The Ten Commandments are found in Exodus 20. Here are some of them. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. These are called commandments because God tells us to do some things. Sentences like these are commanding sentences and they end with a period. Here are two more commanding sentences. Close the door, please. Pick up the toys. When we are surprised or excited, our voices show strong feeling. Sentences showing strong feeling are called exclaiming sentences. Here are some examples of exclaiming sentences. What a beautiful sunset that is. The cows are in the cornfield. Okay, then it says, remember a commanding sentence tells someone to do something. A commanding sentence ends with a period. An exclaiming sentence shows strong feeling. 
an exclaiming sentence ends with an exclamation mark. Then practice with commanding and exclaiming sentences. All of these are commanding or exclaiming sentences. Copy each one and put a period or an exclamation mark after it. Pass the bread, please. Do not touch the wet paint. What a beautiful morning it is. Run to the mailbox. The barn is on fire. Da 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 da. Write exclaiming or commanding to tell what kind of sentence you would write about each picture. Then write an exclaiming or commanding sentence to go with each picture. So that's pretty cool. And then right here, well, I guess this is going to be a little bit of review. So maybe maybe it's not mastery, maybe a little bit of spiral. But anyways, write telling, asking, commanding, or exclaiming for each sentence. Write the correct end punctuation for each one. I don't know if this is spiral or mastery, but you're in one unit right now. See, you're in unit one. So they're, they do a really good job at like just really uh, going deep into it. Um, so then let's see here. Subjects and predicates and commanding sentences. See, it's just more review. There's my husband. Just came in the room. Reviewing what you have learned. Capitalization and punctuation in names and initials. Quotations and quotation marks. So you can see everything is back to the Bible. Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. I will come again, Jesus promised. Let's see, you're writing quotations using apostrophes. I'll try to go a little slower so you can pause it if you want to get a better view of it. Let me do this here. Put it in the camera there. Using apostrophes and contractions. Reviewing what you have learned. Checking for capitalization. Proofreading for punctuation. Checking our spelling. Practice with spelling. Hmm. Do you remember the story in John 5 about the sick man at the pool of Bethsaida? Jesus was right there to help him, and the man was healed because he accepted Jesus' help. If that man had not allowed Jesus to heal him, he probably would have stayed by the pool the rest of his life. So then here, one word in each list is misspelled. Write each misspelled word correctly using a dictionary if you need help. Hint, first look up the word that you think is probably misspelled. For each sentence, choose the correct spelling from the ones in parenthesis. Check your answers with the dictionary. Mother looked at the calendar, calendar, calendar to see when grandmother would arrive. Jerry had an appointment with the dentist, dentist, dentist to have his tooth filled. So you got your spelling here. Reviewing what you have learned. Review and practice. Review one. So this is, this is your review before the test. And they have a review two. And then extra activity and then a poem to enjoy and then you're in unit two building with nouns and pronouns learning about words that name and they do really this they go in so much detail when you compare this to like let's just i'm gonna show you some of becca really quick i got this old little thing here let's see here where is there an example i can use of course this is great i have grade three where is it over there okay here's an example there's an example where they have like a little thing at the top and that's how they explain things this is a becca so you know see here's an example so very just straight to the point of course this is grade two so i'm not saying it's totally like this but just see right here that's an example of what you might see in a becca this is like their little teaching blurb here. See? So I hope you can kind of see why I'm saying Rod and Staff goes a little more in detail. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through this and show you the other part. Names of people and places. The minister spoke. The girl smiled. We went to a city. My friend is kind. Our cousin lived in that state. We crossed the river. The lady waved to us, recognizing common and proper nouns. Copy the two nouns in each sentence. The proper nouns are not capitalized. Write them correctly. Anyways, I love this curriculum so much. We did grade two. At first I saw this on YouTube and I was like, eh, it's kind of boring. And then the more I dug into it, the more I was like, I really like the way they teach. It's very simple, easy to understand. It feels like someone's just kind of talking naturally to you. Um, they explain things really well. It's just, they really explain it in a way that you understand it deeply. It's not like in and out. Oh, I forget what that is. 
they take the time to make sure you really understand it before you move on. And that's why I was saying it might be mastery, but I don't know. It could be just a mix. Writing nouns in a series, reviewing what you've learned, words that stand for nouns, trying to pronouns that tell whom, choosing the correct pronoun, reviewing what you have learned. I'm doing this video because I could not find a video like this. And I like flip throughs and I like to be able to stop and pause and read and see if this is like the type of thing I like. Because every time I buy curriculum for my kids, I spend a lot of time researching and I like videos like this where you can really see in them good. And I wasn't encouraging you to photocopy. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. So I'm not saying to do that. I just want to make sure that I clarify that. Building with verbs. Action verbs. I can't believe I'm already 16 minutes into this video. <laughs> funny. So funny. Anyways, this is going to be a video for someone who's like really trying to get an idea if this curriculum is going to be good for them. I can't believe I'm going through like the whole book. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I guess that's what's happening. Looks like it's going to be a whole flip through. But you can see they really do a good job at explaining things. I definitely recommend it. Not a lot of color, obviously. There's <laughs> zero color. <laughs> but um, I'm going to probably do some more videos. Um, let's see. I'll show you real quick the BJU English 3 and I'll do more on that but here's the BJU press see how it's a little different BJU press there we go this is BJU press English 3, if you want to compare. Just a different style. Different style of learning. I do have the Abeka as well. I'll do a video on these. See, I'm, I'm the kind of person, like, I'll buy one curriculum and I'm like, oh, but this one looks so good. Call it what you want, but hey, it benefits you when I do this because then you get to see these different options. I'm going to probably do more comparison videos since I do have the Abeka Language 3, the new one. We did BJU. What else? Someone, someone gave us the CLE. I could do a really cool video on all four. CLE, Abeka, Rod and Staff, BJU Press. I can do a video on all of those, like comparing grade three English. They're all different. And they all offer different things. There's obviously a lot of similarities between them, but they are, they are different. I'm not going to go through everything because it's not really necessary. It's like almost 20 minutes. Hopefully people will, if they don't want to see all of this, they'll zoom through this fast forward. Using a telephone, how innocent. Like our kids don't already know how to work smartphones. Okay, so anyways, that's that. 
index there. Okay, here's the teacher's guide, a little bit bigger. So, about this thick. I think I paid 20 bucks on eBay for this. overview here. I'm not going to go through all of it because it's not really necessary. But they have worksheets. Okay, and I think it's extra practice. I don't know. And they have the tests. So if you don't buy these tests, it's not the end of the world. I would buy it though from Milestone Books or whoever sells this curriculum. So very straight to the point. I love this curriculum. Comparing this to like a Becca, I'm not crazy about Abeka. I don't like their lesson plans. There's just something about it that makes my eyes glaze over. I like CLE, BJU Press, and Rod and Staff the most for the teacher's guides. What I like about all of them is you're gonna see what the student is seeing in their textbook, and then you have just like a brief explanation, but everything is in there. With like Abeka, you've gotta buy this for like 35 bucks or something. This is just the answer key. Then you've got to buy their lesson plans where with this, everything is in one book. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the inside. It, it's very easy the way they teach. So it'll say, um, sorry, I'm trying to read this myself. Um, to teach the correct use of pronouns is a compound subject or object. Let me try to zoom in on that. Um, so oral review, how is a common noun different from a proper noun? A common noun is the name of a person, place, or thing and is not capitalized. A proper noun is the name of a specific person, place, or thing and it is capitalized. Give the nouns of the sentence and tell whether they are common or proper. My brother worked for Dr. Clark last summer. Brother is common, Dr. Clark is proper, and summer is common. Tell whether these nouns need apostrophes as used in the sentences boys the little boys mother was upset or was busy yes farmers what is the farmer what is in the farmer's field yes cows two cows are in the field no give the seven pronouns that tell who i you he she it we they give the seven pronouns that tell whom me you him her is it us them and then class. On the board, write these two sentences. Mark said, blank candy was a raccoon. Mark said Kevin and blank caught a raccoon. Ask the class to say which pronoun they should use to stand for Mark's name in the first sentence. Write I in the blank. Then ask them to give the pronoun they would use in the second sentence. If they say I blank good, if they say me, explain that the pronoun is doing the same work in both sentences. So the correct pronoun for both sentences is I. Use the following sentences for further practice. Ask the class to first state the sentence as two separate sentences and then correctly as one sentence. Then you have, of course, the answers. And then here, so you have more answers right here and right here. So it's really good. Okay, now. You can see more details, oral review, what kind of word must every sentence have, a verb, what two things do verbs show, action and being, where can the verb be found in a sentence, anywhere, how is the past form of most verbs made, by adding ed, is the s form used with a singular subject or a plural subject, a singular subject, and then you have all your answers. So when you get to the back here, I'll show you, okay. So that's the last page of the student's text. Then you have the alphabet, or you have the worksheets, and it has the answers, and I'll show you that too. I'm not, I don't, I haven't done this, so I can't tell you if you're supposed to do this as extra practice, or if this is something that goes along with it, I really don't know. Still in work 
worksheets. Of course, it's the answer key in case I answer that. Now, okay, so still on worksheets. Lots of worksheets. Okay. Okay, there's the last worksheet. And then here is the test. Unit one test. So too because see, we drive we do road trips so this is so easy for me to just carry and take with me so if we're going on a road trip my daughter can be in the back holding this and I can be holding this and we can just talk and do it together when we're on our road trip it doesn't always happen obviously we have a lot of kids but we have a passenger van that has tons of space and I love it so it's very helpful. So this can be torn out. It's perforated. I don't think anyone's done a video like this. But I wish someone had because why is nobody highlighting this curriculum? Why is nobody taking the time to share it? Because this is awesome. And the nice thing is with this, you can reuse this for every kid. Where if you buy, you know, like CLE. I love CLE, but you got to buy a new, new workbook every time. And they're cheap, so it's not a big deal. But if you're on a budget, then go for the textbooks. And their math is really awesome, too. So, you know, you can buy this from our website. They're, this is cheap. Like, if you buy this on Milestone Books, you can get, like, the whole kit, the test, the worksheets, and the books for, like, 50 bucks. And, and you could use that for all of your kids. You know, and if you don't want to use this, I don't know if you're allowed to photocopy it. You could... I guess look and see if they offer that option but if you're not allowed to just have the kids write on a piece of paper if that's okay I don't really know they can always just write the answers and you can save this for the next kid but anyway so that is that hope you enjoy it um I'll do some more videos on the other grades but um I have not done this yet we are going to do it my daughter is already beyond this grade but it doesn't matter we're still going to do it because the way they teach is just so excellent. And this can be a supplement if you're not going to be writing out everything. If you just want to read through it together, sitting side by side, I definitely recommend it. You can read through this so quickly with your child. Me and my daughter, when we go through it, we'd be like five, ten minutes max. If like we actually timed it one time. And uh, that was with the grade two. But we just decided that just sitting beside each other and doing it together was really helpful. So if you have like a schedule and your kids do different subjects throughout the day, you could just take the time to sit down together and do this together. And with my older daughter, we do a lot of homeschooling when the kids are not in our way. So we do stuff sometimes at nighttime and um, that's when we get a lot done and we move quickly and it's really nice. So anyways, I hope this video has helped. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks, bye.